What is up everyone? Welcome back to Go Kart Build video number 14 and it has been a long and awaited video. I have been on vacation for two weeks and I got back about a week ago and since then I started my summer job and just things have been kind of crazy trying to get back into the swing of things out here in San Diego. Um, I had a great vacation. Uh, Florida was awesome and Pittsburgh was very fun as well. Went jet skiing in Florida and got to see all my family in Pittsburgh up, up in there and uh, it was a blast. But I'm glad to be back in San Diego and uh, back to doing what I love, working on the go-kart and going to car shows and things of that sort. Um, on my trip, I wasn't able to do as much car stuff as I wanted just because things were a little busy. So I was hoping to do some sort of video for cars while I was on my trip, but I didn't really have a chance to. The only thing I really did on my trip was stop by the Lamborghini dealership in Florida and just check a few things out. But there was nothing like, wow, amazing there that was kind of worth taking a video of and I was only there for about 20 minutes. So enough of that, I'm going to catch you guys up on what's been going on with the go-kart. Now, within this past about week or so since I got back, I've done quite a bit of fabrication um, and I just did some fabrication to get it going again and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what I've been doing. I'm really stoked how far it's come and I'm just dying to get this into a rolling chassis so it can actually move and be somewhat functional. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take it on over to the go-kart and I'll show you guys what's going on. Now before I show you guys the update on the go-kart, I kind of wanted to show you how big of a mess my garage is right now. And this pretty much happens every time I decide to spend an evening or half a day working on the cart. And uh, so I get to film this video and then clean up my garage so I can pull my car in. And then I have to go to bed and wake up at 8 in the morning for work. So uh, let's go ahead and take it on over here and I'll show you the first update. Okay, so the first update came with the front suspension, and this is what I worked on first when I got back. And what I left off with, if you guys can remember from the last video, was there was just this uh, kind of 45 degree angle piece coming up out of the uh, suspension arm, and then it had the tab on it at the end for the shock to mount to. Now, I knew that that wasn't going to be enough uh, strength and support for that part of the, the suspension because there's going to be a lot of load and a lot of stress being put on this point and down here and down here. Now to help you know counteract with that stress and load I wanted to add kind of like a vertical truss piece. So that was the first thing, first update that I did and I'll kind of in a second here I'll show you guys a closer look. Um, so basically it just it's a, a flat cut on one end and then a 45 cut on the other end and I kind of had to just guess and check with the size because I didn't want to go on the computer and actually do it out so I just kind of eyeballed it and then uh, grinded it down or ground it down until it got about the right size so I'll go ahead and show you a closer look okay so here's a little bit closer look so if you couldn't see it in the last shot I apologize but uh, so this is what I was left with just before I left to go on vacation. It was just this piece coming out of the suspension arm. And then when I came back, I cut this piece and then welded it to both ends um, on the suspension arm. And that's going to really strengthen this piece. You know, all this load is going to be this way. I'm not too worried about load and forces this way. It's all going to be really this way because when the suspension arm pivots, it's going to go like that and then compress the shock and then that's where all the, the force is going to go. So what I have left to do here is um, I have to grind, let me move the camera a little bit, I have to grind the top part of this down a little bit because it's kind of got a sharp edge and I want to make sure that that's not going to you know, cut someone if they uh, hit their leg up against it or whatever. Um, so then I got that and then I have something else that I have to do to all the suspension or uh, shock tabs um, that I'll talk about a little bit later when I get on to the rear part of the suspension. And uh, one little last update uh, that I figured out as, um, when I was kind of tinkering around with this front suspension piece is the bolts that I got um, with the shocks aren't going to really work well just because uh, the way they're set up it's like uh, let me see if I can go find one. <clears throat> so 
So the way they're set up, you have this kind of sleeve looking bolt and then this little tiny one and this goes inside and screws inside. There it went. But you get the idea, that one goes inside that and this piece isn't quite long enough to go all the way across the suspension tab. So that little tiny one is uh, sticking out and then part of the shock tab rests on that tiny part so then it causes this to jiggle around. So I'm just gonna get some normal bolts and, and nuts and lock washers and just use those instead and substitute that. So that's pretty much it with the front suspension. I pretty much did the same thing on the other side over there. That's blurry but um, you guys get the idea. It's pretty symmetrical here. And uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and take you on to the back and show you what I've been working on today. Okay, so the first thing that I worked on uh, when I started today was getting the rear axles um, somewhat fabricated. This was a big pain in the butt, let me tell you. So, if you all can remember from previous videos, what I had in the middle here was a wooden dowel rod to simulate um, the axle, so I didn't buy this really expensive piece of steel tubing and cut it the wrong size. So I took that out, and if you can remember the sprocket was also attached to that. So the sprocket's just sitting on the side here, I didn't want to put it on right now. And for some reason, now this tubing is one and a quarter inch to fit inside the bearings, and that's kind of the size that I picked for everything over here. And for some reason, that steel tubing does not fit. So I had to do this with all the other little pieces that I had to uh, work on before for the rear axle. I had to take my angle grinder and grind this entire thing down. And this is about 18 inches long. So it's about a foot and a half, a little over a foot and a half. And um, that really was a pain in the butt. And so I had to grind it down on all sides until I could slide it all the way through with um, pretty much uh, no problem whatsoever. Now in that process, I actually blew up the grinder I was using. So I'm gonna go ahead and just talk about that real quick. Oh. All right, so when I was working on that, um, that axle and I had to grind all that down, I was on the grinder a lot. So I was pumping a lot of juice through this. You know, it was getting kind of hot. The wires were getting hot. And then for some reason, it started kind of going all wacky on me. And it would only, so that I would be pulling the trigger and then it would kind of just stop and then start and then stop and then start. And then it was funny because I would be grinding and then I would tilt it down, it would stop. But the minute I would tilt it back up, it would start again. So I was really confused. And then um, I kind of just was like, okay, well, I'm just going to try and keep powering through this. And then for some reason, the wire shorted out. So I was using it and I heard this pop and then a spark. And then I looked, I took off the little protective cover here and the wire pretty much uh, shorted out and melted itself. So I had to take that to Home Depot and it's actually not my grinder, I was borrowing it. And luckily Home Depot was able to exchange it for a brand new grinder. So just thought I'd share that with you guys. It was kind of funny, um, but also annoying at the same time because it really kind of interrupted the process a little bit. But back onto the go-kart now. Okay, so one thing I kind of wanted to try and inform you guys about, and if it's been kind of confusing in the past, is how this rear axle is gonna work. Now, as you can see here, there's this main, this axle is a solid piece of tubing, and that's one and a quarter inch. And so, what I figured out was that I'm gonna have to do kind of like a multiple axle setup. So, here I got the U-joint. That's gonna help uh, turn this rotational motion of the axle and so it can pivot with the suspension. So that's gonna slide on there like that. And this U-joint is has a one and a quarter inch bore, so that fits perfectly. And then the problem that arised was over here. Now, what I had originally done was just do another piece of one and a quarter inch that goes right from the one end of the U-joint to through, this is a pillow block bearing, and one and a quarter inch also, and just have another piece that goes all the way through, and then the wheel would be over there. And then this would be uh, secured down with set screws. But I didn't account for the fact that when this pivots, the, direct, the distance from here 
to here changes so it wouldn't let the suspension pivot because it was locked into place. So because of that, this part has to be able to slide. So what I did was I got some more of that one and a quarter inch tubing and cut a piece just big enough to fit in here. Now this is uh, I think one inch outer diameter. This is uh, one inch inner diameter. So this is gonna slide through here. And then when I put it back down the, on the uh, suspension arm here, this piece, there's gonna be another um, sleeve of one and a quarter inch to fit in the, the bore of the U-joint. And then this, the, the other end of the one inch tube is gonna go in that. And then that's gonna be welded to that little sleeve. So it'll be welded here, it'll be able to slide here, and then there's gonna be another sleeve of one and a quarter inch at the other end to fit the wheel hub. And so when it pivots, this part will slide, and these two parts will be stationary. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, it's kind of still really confusing to explain until it's completely solidified in formation, but that's kind of like what the rear axle is gonna look like. It's gonna have this smaller piece of one inch steel tubing um, within the one and a quarter inch sleeves that are inside here, here, and the um, wheel hub. So that's enough of that. That's the first thing that I worked on today when working on the go-kart. And then going on to the last bit, which I just finished up one half, uh, finished up the right side. I still have yet to do this side over here. Okay, so after finishing up the axle, the next thing I moved on to here in the rear part of the go-kart is the rear shock setup. Now, what I have done right now on this side is it's pretty much done for the most part. And I have mounted the tab here and the tab here on the suspension arm for both shocks. So remember, there's two shocks in the back because the axle has to split the middle. So in order to have like equal um, force balance between the two shocks, I had to do two on each side. And then obviously the bearing is going to be sitting at the end here. Now, it was kind of tricky to figure this out, and I had to kind of do the space, uh, make sure the spacing was correct. And once I did that, I just tack welded it into place and then went ahead and did the finishing welds once I knew it was a, a good location for that to sit in and it worked well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the two shocks in on this side and just to kind of show you guys how it's gonna look. And I think it looks really cool, especially well, once you see it with the front shock system too. Now if you guys can remember, the front shocks were pretty stubby looking and these I think they're six inch shocks. And again, these are just bike shocks that I bought off eBay, um, but they're gonna be plenty enough for the load. Um, each spring is rated uh, to 1,500 pounds per square inch. And um, that's gonna be plenty of uh, spring force to support the, the go-kart. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, attach these onto the shock tabs. Okay, so I got the bolts here. These bolts that came with the bigger shocks are a little bit different actually, so who knows, maybe these will actually be useful. Alright, there's one side. I'm not going to put the nuts on just because it's not really necessary right now. Just kind of to show you guys. Why does that not want to go up? Because oh, of the U joint. Okay. Gonna have to play play it a little bit to get it in. That's the other side. Okay. All right, so there's one. And I have to get some washers to go in between here because it's not exactly a perfect fit with the, with the shocks here and the inside of the shock tabs that I uh, actually built myself. Get this extra bag open here. Okay.
Oops. Hmm. It's not aligning up for some reason. That's interesting. Okay, alright. Well, let me uh, figure out what's going on here and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so... That was a, a giant mess. So, basically, when I uh, welded these set of shock tabs on, um, I should have kept one shock in while I mounted the other, but I didn't. I took one out. And because of that, when I mount, when I put this shock in, this shock didn't align with its holes and its shock tab mount. So I had to, I was trying to drill out the holes and that, and I finally did that. And then the holes were so big that the bolt was just like rattling around in there. So, um, and then what I tried to do is use the, what I, uh, let's see, I used the welder to try and fill up the holes. And that worked for the most part, except I kind of burned through some of it, but I filled up the, I filled up the holes, patched it, and I think it's, you know, it's pretty strong still. So, at least it's on the this end, and the force is going to be going down uh, that way. So, uh, that was a big mess, but I finally got this to align. It's a very tight fit. I'd rather have it be a tight fit than too loose and have the bolt rattle around uh, in the shock tab. So, that is it. That <laughs> That's it for that. Um, pretty much... I have to do the same thing for the next side on the other side of the go-kart, um, except this time I'm going to keep one shock mounted while I mount the other shock so this doesn't happen again. And so as you can see, there's the look kind of of the rear suspension, or at least what it will look like, and it looks pretty cool. Um, the only thing, I mean, these shocks are pretty stiff, so this... <laughs> Even though it's going to have a suspension, I have a feeling the ride on this go-kart is going to be very stiff and bumpy. But we will see once we uh, get the engine mounted and actually are sitting in it, see how the suspension travels and stuff like that. Alright everyone, I think that's going to do it for this video. I hope I caught you guys up enough uh, to kind of keep you updated on the go-kart build and answer any questions you may have. Um, I was going to record a little more, but I spent a lot of time trying to fix that hiccup that I just told you guys about. So I'm really tired. I have to get up for work in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Um, but I plan on doing another video probably sometime next week when I do more fabrication. I'm, almost, I'm also taking an online writing class, so I have to write an essay this weekend. So I'm going to be doing that. But as soon as I get around to being able to work on the go-kart, I'll make sure I take a video or record a video and put it up for you guys. But for now, thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys have a good one. Thanks.